everybody. It's your mom's sanity coach is here. I'm Coach Emily. Hey, I'm Coach Debbie. And we are going behind the scenes. We are peeling off the layers and we're just here today for, uh, we want to just tell you a little bit about us. This is Coach Debbie's turn. She is on deck today. So we are going to talk a little bit about motherhood and faith and kind of how those things weave together. And if you have questions that you would like us to answer in video, then you just let us know and yes. we'll see if we can do some more of this, yes. okay? So, um, let's see here. How would you describe your parenting style? <laughs> A work in progress. <laughs> That's all of us. I am, um, you know, this morning as a mom, I was losing my junk at 7 a.m. So, I'm, I'm very much like a prison warden, you know, just like there's not a lot of fluff and maybe some of it's just the nature of having four boys, but right. there's not a lot of like touchy feely, warm fuzzies or don't you know this makes mommy upset They're, cause they don't care. They're so egocentric. They don't care. So I think I'm just, um, I'm not great with consistency, mm, but fun. I try to, I at least tell myself like run a tight ship. Right. So there's lots of predictability and routine. Right. And narrow boundaries. Gotcha. Hey. <laughs> I'm basically mean. That was all that to say I'm mean. You are not mean. <laughs> what is your favorite part of motherhood? Wow. That's really hard. You know, sometimes I think I just like look at my kids and I'm like, you're mine. Aww, like, I you're know. mine. And I have known you Sweet. since you were like this tiny yeah. and now you're this tall. Like I've gotten to watch the whole thing. And I always thought, you know, like I love babies. I don't like kids, but I like babies. But it's like every year, every season, I'm like, now this is my favorite. Nope. Now this is my favorite. Aww. And it's like, I've enjoyed every stage and I really didn't think I would. I, I can appreciate that because I, if I'm honest, babies are not my favorite thing. Like yeah. so far, I'm five and a half years in the older they get, like, the more fun it is for me, yes. too. So, um, good, good. What are your, like, if you had to name your top three priorities and your ultimate goals in raising your kids, what would you say those are? I know it's a big deal. Know Jesus. I need you to know Jesus. Like, yeah. real. I don't want you to, like, try to inherit my faith right. in some plastic God. Um... I need you to be a functional member of society <laughs> who doesn't live in my basement or behind bars. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's it. That's all. <laughs> that's fine. Hey, that that those two encompass pretty much everything, right? <laughs> so awesome. Um, so talk to me a little bit about. Um, most most people know that Coach Debbie is a widow and she's remarried to wonderful Coach Jason. We call our husbands coaches. It's not <laughs> weird because they're not really coaches, but whatever. Um, talk to us about mothering through that. And even now, like, I mean, you tell me a lot of things, but what is it like to, how do you figure out, and I know there's no easy answer, how to share and what to keep from them and as they get older and seasons and that kind of thing like how does that look for you and I'm sure it's not an easy to find thing but yeah that's that's a good question you know I think that I've tried to be really authentic mm -hmm. without oversharing with them right. so they have seen me fall apart emotionally at the drop of a hat you know, where I'm just like, I'm a mess. And it's, a, I keep trying to say it's okay mm -hmm. to fall apart. It's okay mm -hmm. to cry. It's okay to feel angry, sad, lonely, right. numb, confused, whatever you're feeling is real. And the hardest thing in my life has been telling those boys, mm -hmm. your dad is dead. Mm -hmm. To utter those words, it took Ev literally everything in me I could not speak it I couldn't I was like mute mm -hmm. and I'm like just get it out and I think I've always as we're in the bottom and we're like okay well we're doing this all by ourselves it's just the five of us now and this is hard and this is different it's always like that but God right always re always end it with but God you know like mm -hmm. this is hard but God is good, or mm -hmm. this is permanent, but so is paradise, you know, and to 
always focus on God allowed this. Mm -hmm. He's sovereign. He's caring. He's not mean. He's not unfair. Mm -hmm. I think that for me, it's just, it's still not real. Right. I mean, here I am at six years. Mm -hmm. It's still not real. It's still someone else's movie mm -hmm. that I'm living out, I feel like. And, and it doesn't seem real that he's gone. But my kids really quickly grasped the idea of death. I've heard of other kids that are like, when is daddy coming home? And the mom mm -hmm. has to keep saying he's not coming home. Remember, my kids never asked, when is he coming home? They knew he was gone. But I've tried to create a platform to say, now you get to learn more about heaven. Now you get to know yeah. more about Jesus. And, yeah, and you, you do that so well. If you know Jesus, yeah. then you do get to spend forever with your real life living father who's not in pain. Mm -hmm. And it's been a tough road. It's really, you know, if you're a single mom watching this or a widowed mom, I mean, that is some brutal day in, day out stuff that no one's coming to help you with baths. No one's splitting up homework, jobs. No one's going to wash the pot in the sink. It's all on you. It's yeah. all on you. And it's so weighty and monotonous that you're like, you have to know. The, I don't know how you don't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. You have to know the Lord. Yeah. It's Thank you for sharing. Oh, I love to share. Oh. I'm mm -hmm. an open book. <laughs> <laughs> you are. And, and that's such a blessing. Overshare. Um, talk to us about your your quiet time, devotion, to whatever you want to talk, your time with God. Yes. But uh, there's so many different ways to define that. So. Yeah. So I usually, it's got to be first thing in the morning. If I, if I start conning myself into like, I'll do it at lunchtime or mm -hmm. I'll do it right before I go to sleep. Mm -mm. Yeah. That's like a workout. No, it's got to <laughs> be in the morning. And so I do, I try to pour some coffee and do it before everybody is crowding me. I like to have that silence. So I, for me, I'm willing to get less sleep mm -hmm. if I can have no one talk to me. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get enough of God so I can deal with my day. And, and so I'll read my Bible and hold my coffee. I start with prayer time, just praising God and saying, help me understand your word. Because this is like a history book. Like, you've got to help me understand mm -hmm. all of this. And... And then I read his word. Sometimes I'll do studies. Sometimes I'm just his word alone. Mm -hmm. And I do use my Bible notes. And I, I try to read each chapter three times in a row. Mm -hmm. So I'm really getting it and not just like, check, right. done, done. Okay, now it's time to cook some eggs, you know. But just to be like, this is everything. Mm -hmm. This is what really is that eternal investment, you know. Yeah, awesome. That's yeah. great. I love that three times because the first one and a half, I'm yeah. just like, what did I just read? Exactly. Really, I feel badly about that, but the more people you talk to, it's like, oh no, that's just our human brains. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Yeah. So, um, what do you think God is teaching you in the, this season right now? Oh, wow. I wish I knew. <laughs> <laughs> help me get the shortcut. Lord, help me get the shortcut. You know, I... I think his constant message is his faithfulness. I think mm -hmm. I'm always forgetting he has been faithful, he is faithful, he will be faithful. He's yeah. like, have I ever not been faithful to you? Yeah. Why do you keep doing everything in your own strength? Mm -hmm. And like, I'll get to you, God, I'll, but you're on the back burner right mm -hmm. now. Let me try to work this out and power through. And right. he's like, what are you doing? Why, why are you striving so hard? It's right. pointless. And so... I think he's like, I, I am enough. Mm -hmm. No one else is enough. People are always going to let you down. Husbands, yeah. kids, everybody's going to let you down. But he's like, I'm the anchor. I'm the unchanging one who loves you more than any of these other people. Right. I'm going to take care of your future. So I think that's, awesome. that's a hard lesson. Awesome. Last question. Talk to us a little bit about um, being a semi newlywed again when you never well I guess how long has been married four, four years, years. Yeah. I, I'm I, a like, newlywed. I don't know I mean it is right yes so, I feel like a newlywed so how like what go having an opportunity mm -hmm. we'll call it an opportunity because it is an opportunity to yeah. have a second chance we'll say at marriage what would how are your priorities different now than they were the first oh, go round when that. you were a 
little yeah. little girl, right? Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like when you bought your first house and you move and you're looking for a second house and you're like, now I know mm -hmm. I, I need a two car garage, not a one car garage. Right. Or, you know, I really didn't need that extra cabinet. So I need a, a smaller kitchen or whatever it looks like. You kind of have that experience. And I think I've learned to celebrate each day. Mm -hmm. So dismiss okay. the nonsense where you're like, no, he really, I don't like the way he looked at me when he said that, or, <laughs> you know, he hasn't bought me flowers in about six weeks. So now I'm mad at him. Instead, I just want to be really encouraging to let the other stuff go and to speak my mind. So I will say, I would like you to mm -hmm. order me chocolate covered strawberries sometime this month. That would mean a lot to me instead of going, why doesn't he order me chocolate right. strawberries anymore? Oh my goodness, you yeah. know, and cause he has no idea. He has no idea. He is clueless. Bless him. So I think just to cherish yeah. those little things to really study him and memorize him yeah. and, and to know like every day counts. Like, be the first one to apologize. Yeah. You know, be very forgiving a hundred times over because I'm the worst of sinners. You right. know, I need forgiveness. So mm -hmm. it's really changed my marriage style, you yeah. know, from my first marriage where there was plenty of friction and strife. And I'm like, I don't want that. Yeah. I just want joy. Yeah. I want to build you up yeah. and let the Lord refine you. I don't need to be his Holy Spirit. That's right. That's yes. so good. <laughs> Mic drop there. We'll end <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. Thank you Thank so much for you. sharing. You're so awesome. Thank you. Thanks for being here, y'all.